Welcome to the CWA Certification Package. My name is Eric Call. In these courses, we're going to spend most of our time talking about mobile communications. Because one of the great things about wireless is that you can move around while communicating, and people are willing to pay money for it. If you added up all of the industry associated with mobile communications, everything from selling handsets and providing service, all of the people who work for the carrier, the trucks they buy, people getting jobs as riggers, putting stuff on towers, the insurance that they have to pay for. The mobile communications industry shows up as part of the gross domestic product in every country in the world. We'll start off with some general principles why we use radio instead of light for wireless communications, for example. And then look at the wireless spectrum, the different radio bands that have been allocated for different services. And then talk a little bit about analog radio and spend a fair amount of time talking about digital radio, which is actually using modems over radio and how modems work. And then finish off with penetration, propagation, and fading. The second course in the certification is mobile communications and mobility. So we'll start off with some basic concepts and terminology in the mobile business and then go through the idea of cellular radio and then go through the different generations of cellular that were deployed. The first generation frequency division multiplexing and analog, second generation digital, Putting the technologies aside for a moment, we'll look at PSTN phone calls, which are called voice minutes on your billing plan, and then how mobile internet is provided, of course, called a data plan. Then to summarize, we'll look at mobile network operators, mobile virtual network operators, and how roaming works. Then we'll continue through the generations and technologies, starting with second generation TDMA technologies called GSM in most of the world and called TDMA in North America. This is legacy technology. There are no questions about GSM or TDMA on the certification exam anymore. So you can skip the lessons on TDMA and GSM if you desire. But I would claim that knowing what GSM actually was is part of the base knowledge of mobile communications. Literally billions of people had GSM service. And to this day, people erroneously call third generation CDMA UMTS service GSM. Two warring factions emerged as to how we were going to share the radio bands amongst the users. We had the TDMA and GSM people on one side and the CDMA people on another side. And then the third generation, all of the serious technologies were CDMA, but the two warring factions didn't stop warring. They just changed what they were arguing about. So on the GSM TDMA side, we have the UMTS wideband CDMA for third generation. And in the other camp, we have the 1X version. And both of them had their data optimized, 1X EVDO and HSPA. And along the way, we'll discuss the idea of spread spectrum and how that's implemented with CDMA and some operational characteristics of CDMA. And then we'll see how Steve Jobs ended the standards war for fourth generation with his iPhone in only letting carriers in the GSM, TDMA, UMTS camp have the iPhone. And so the carriers that were in the other camp threw in the towel and went with their version for fourth generation, which is called LTE. And with LTE, we're back to frequency division multiplexing. But of course, there are some huge advantages compared to the first generation. And we'll look at how you can get assigned multiple parallel channels and run modems on each one to do massive parallel downloads. We'll spend some time revisiting modems for radio and end up understanding how LTE can transmit different groups of six bits to many different people at the same time on the same carrier using OFDMA. 
Then 5G, which is called new radio in the standards bodies. We'll discuss the immediate impact of 5G, which is more bits per second, and also the new spectrum that's becoming available for mobile wireless communications at the same time as 5G. We'll talk about the design goals and use cases. First is enhanced mobile broadband, which is more bits per second for your cell phone. Then massive machine-type communications for the Internet of Things, which is characterized by very low bit rates. And then the thing the newspapers like to talk about when they mention 5G, the ultra-broadband implemented using millimeter wave bands. We'll finish off with a roundup of the spectrum sharing technologies FDMA, TDMA, CDMA, and OFDMA. In the third and final course in the certification package, we'll do a survey of other types of wireless technologies, primarily fixed wireless, where the idea of mobility doesn't come into the equation. We'll start off with light, infrared, which is used in remote controls, and then Bluetooth, which has become ubiquitous, and Wi-Fi, more properly called 802.11 wireless LANs. And we'll talk about security on wireless LANs and the WPA2 personal and why you want that one. Then we'll go over broadband internet to the home via fixed wireless. And at the other end of the scale, low power wide area networks for the Internet of Things point-to-point -point radio systems, and satellites to finish things off.